Hey. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Morning. Welcome to podcast number eight. We got a very special guest, a very knowledgeable guest, somebody who's going to fill us in with uh, some information to help us navigate through these waters that we're dealing with right now. So, today's guest has been a nurse since 2011, a nurse practitioner since 2017, and he launched Home Health MP last year. His hobbies are health, well being, sports, and fitness. Him and his wife have two dogs, two girls, and he actually delivered his youngest daughter. <laughs> Emery. Everybody, welcome Marvin DeCastro. Marvin. Woo! We need hey, a good morning, time. guys. Thanks for having me on the show today. Marvin, before, I go, before we get into it, can I uh, tell my version of the story of your, your, your most recent baby? Yeah. This is going to be good. Okay, so we're at an event, this <laughs> cultural event, and uh, I was speaking at it, but Marvin was the organizer. So I'm sitting at my table at my booth, and, and he's talking to me. He's like, hey, my wife's going into labor, and you know, I have two kids of my own, and I'm like, shouldn't you be going? And he's like, oh, yeah, he's like, oh, he's like looking around, making sure everything is all good. He's like, okay, I'm going to go. So he goes, <laughs> and then maybe, I don't know, two, three, hour, four, five, I don't even know how long, but it was like he comes back, and I look at him, he's got like these like little dots on his face, like like brown dots, right? And I'm like, I'm like, dude, he's like, Did you, where, where, is your wife at the hospital? Like, why are you not at the hospital? He's like, he just he he goes from like business mode to like, dude. He's like his eyes light up. He's like, guess what? He's like, I delivered my own baby. I get home <laughs> and she's breaching. She's on the ground and I just like deliver my baby in my living room. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, it's crazy. And he's like, I'm still covered in blood. I'm like, yo. And you're here right now. He's like, yeah. That's bucket list stuff right there. That's bucket list stuff right there. Uh, Deliver your own child. I've, yeah. I've been there for the delivery of both my kids. I've never delivered my own kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Marvin, give us your. Give, what happened? Tell us your version. You know what? It's uh, it was an experience. Like so, like RJ was saying, we were setting up for that day, and you know, I was a co co organizer. And so I've been planning uh, this event for, you know, a couple of weeks and the last few days has just been like 24 seven trying to get all the vendors together. And so that day when we're there, we're trying to set up, but things are already crazy. Things aren't going as planned. I got my booth set up. I'm trying to, uh, my family's helping me out, trying to get everything set up. And so we open at 12 and, you know, a lot of the vendors aren't ready yet. So we're kind of scrambling and I'm still, I'm, I'm kind of still scrambled and my, I'm not looking at my phone. My brother goes to me and he says, he's, he's wide-eyed. He's like, hey, your mom just called. Danny's water just broke. And Danny's my wife, right? Mm. And I'm like, oh, sh I'm like, oh, shit. Like, you know, <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm, I'm panicking right now because I'm already panicking. And then now this is going on. Yeah. But in my head, I'm thinking, okay, just she's, she's uh, in early labor. We'll go to the hospital. She'll get checked. And then we'll come back, right? Like, that's what happened. Mm. Mm. Naomi, so you know, I, I'm teaching my uh, my family what to do while I'm gone, and so I'm going home. And as I pull up to the driveway, I'm going through the garage, and I can hear screaming. Oh man! Like screaming, like high pitched <laughs> screaming that I've never heard. I've never heard of it. Yeah. Ever, never heard before. And so I I come in, and I'm like, what the hell's going on in my head? I'm like, oh man, like the worst case is happening right now. Yeah. And so I open the door and my wife is there right at the top of the stairs and she's lying down on her back, her knees are up <laughs> and the baby's head's coming out. Oh. Like she's, cr she's crowding. She's ready to come out. Yeah. And my mom's there. She's in panic. Oh, no. Operator and, and she's saying, "Oh Mar my God, the baby's coming!" Marvin, I'm gonna stop you. Go back to your 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 mom is in panic mode because you're going slow in the screen. There, start again. Is it him or is it us, Jerome? Yeah. Marvin, hang on a second. <laughs> we don't know if it's your internet or our internet. What what uh, internet is this connected to, Jerome? Same same one. All right. Yeah, I'm on a I'm on a direct connection. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Let's keep going. Okay. Well, we got most of that story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you delivered the well, baby. She was in panic base of the stairs. So how, how long did it take? So you saw the well, head? So, so basically, yeah. uh, I'm on the phone with the operator. And so I'm, I'm coming down and I'm saying, okay, Dania, we're going to get through this. And so the operator is saying, we have to push now. And I'm like, 
man, the EMS is on this way. Like, we can't just wait for like a second. And, like, no, we got to push now. And so I remember, you know, uh, with the first baby, you count to 10 and you, you're pushing, right? And so that's what I worked on with Danny. But um, the operator was like, put, put your palm on her vagina. And yeah. so I put it on the vagina, but I pushed the head back in. <laughs> like, like, and then, and then she said, like, no, like, like, she like, went. Like, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I was just like, in my mind, I was like, put your hand on the vagina. So that's the first thing I do. So. So you had to push an extra. So the first push, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, and then the head comes back to the original position that you know I pushed it back in. And then and then the second push, one, two, three, ten, and then the head comes out. Yeah. And my daughter's name is Emery, so she's looking around and I'm like, Daddy, one more push and one, two, three, ten. And then the body just came out and then on my hands. Oh, wow. Oh, and it was just it, you know what the cord was wrapped around her neck too. Oh, and wow. so uh, I was holding her close so that it wasn't choking, but I was able to kind of get, get that out. And then the EMS just came right after. And oh man, just a, an amazing crew. They had maybe like 12 or 13 people in my house, but really? you know, for deli- for emergency deliveries like that, they bring in kind of the whole crew, like fire. Yeah. There was two trucks, uh, two EMS, EMS trucks there. And yeah, we were out of there probably in about half an hour and went right to a yeah. uh, women's hospital. So, you know, it was the perfect storm because the, the head was in the right place. Uh, there was not really any complications and but you know what a feeling right to yeah. be able to deliver your own baby yeah. like uh, i'm you know, so blessed that everything was healthy we're, we're pretty lucky over here I, I think that's a good story and i feel like we don't hear enough of those stories we hear a lot of the negative you got to sit in, in the emergency room for nine hours yeah, yeah. and people are complaining and they're not getting the health and i've heard a lot of people say <laughs> bad things just, you know like they had a nev- negative experience so yeah. it's to the point where they're like we gotta get that doctor <laughs> fired <laughs> but then you listen to this, and a whole team shows up at your house to uh, help you with a newborn baby. I think yeah. that's awesome. We're we're actually a lot luckier than I than I think we are. You know what I mean? So, yeah. well, congratulations on delivering Absolutely. your own child. So well I done. Guess the yeah, real thanks. question is, Marvin, can you still look at your wife the same way? <laughs> 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 Just kidding. Don't answer that. <laughs> uh, you know, she tore quite a bit. Yeah, she had like Which, eight stitches, I, and so. Um, it's funny that you just pushed the I kid back. No, you're not coming out yet. Go back. Go back. <laughs> yeah, I still wake up at night sometimes. Just, like, you know, just panic, yeah. All right, so since we've got a professional on the podcast, we're going to talk about the things that matter right now. Obviously, the coronavirus is on top of everybody's mind. Everybody wants to talk about it. Uh, recent developments, we have now reduced our um, group from 50 to 10, according to the government. They don't want to... S- in, uh, in groups any bigger than that. What are you seeing with respect to, give us your personal opinion, how do you see this playing out? Uh, I know you're in self-quarantine. This is your home office that you're in right now. Can you give a little bit of advice to everybody else who is kind of maybe stressing out, maybe worried? Wait, before we go in, th- uh, I think that we should <coughs> let Marvin say who he is. Like, what does he do? Sure. I, I, th- I think we missed all that. No problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I figured no, that, might. That's a, good, yeah. that's a good segue. So, yeah. um yeah. You know, I'm a nurse practitioner and uh, nurse practitioners, they get confused all the time, right? Um, so RJ, you mistakenly called me a healthcare practitioner. The sa- same idea, a nurse practitioner, basically we do everything that um, uh, like, a, you know, we do prescriptions, we can order imaging and tests, uh, diagnostics, we can refer to specialists, basically anything that a family physician or a GP could do, we have that same scope, okay? There are minute details with things that we can and can't do, uh, but a lot of time we refer to specialists with those uh, types of things. Um, the differences are very minute as well. Um, you know, there are we can't bill the government, and so one of the reasons mm. um, I have people have to pay f- to see an NP if we have a private practice is because we can't charge Manitoba Health, right? Mm. And so that's an issue, that's a barrier for uh, nurse practitioners. Yeah. Uh, but we're everywhere. We're in hospitals. We're in medical clinics. Um, you know, family practices. So we're there. So uh, I launched Home Health NP. So uh, Home Home Health NP basically, we're kind of extending how healthcare is delivered. Okay, this is how uh, I believe healthcare should be more accessible to people. And yeah. so we do home and office visits, and we also do the virtual consults, right? Yeah. So like obviously, if you have say like a family member who is not mobile, say maybe, maybe someone who's older, I go in, in residential homes all the time. And I take care of people who are 80, 90, 100 years old, and we can treat them for basic things 
But if they didn't have my services, they'd have to call Handy Transit. Mm. A family member would have to take the whole day off. They'd mm. have to pay, you know, to get them. Or the the other thing is that they'd have to call a, a you know an, an ambulance, which costs what five hundred, seven fifty. Yeah, exactly. So why not have a practitioner get into the home and do right. the treatment, right? Or and even, the virtual even console, better, yeah, virtual. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in the virtual console right now, there are obvious limitations. Like there's there's a lot of things that we can't do. Like I can't listen to your chest. I can't look in, mm. into your mouth. But, uh, you know, um, virtual care is great because you can be creative. Oh. Virtual visits, you can get creative. And how you do. Yeah, if you're breathing hard, right? There you go. People can take pictures of their... I'm going to think tongue. Tons. Tons. They're tonsils. Tons. And tonsils. Yeah. Marvin, absolutely. you just keep freezing, bro. Take That's, picture of the tongue. You keep yeah, freezing. Right. You keep freezing. So Am I freezing? Yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to try and fill in the gaps as much as possible. <laughs> yeah. Just use your hands oh, and then yeah, we can yeah, try to get as animated and, yeah. Yeah, as much as possible. <laughs> so I think oh. this is a great thing, especially in these times. And I honestly think that, in my opinion, that the government should just be paying you guys because right now a lot of the gps they probably just don't know how to do zoom calls like we can barely Mm -hmm. get our 30 40 50 year olds to figure out how to use zoom yeah and right now we're we're nobody's going to the i'm you know i'm not bringing jet to the to the children's emergency unless he's got some major laceration or something that is necessary Mm -hmm. but otherwise nobody's leaving their home and much less going to a hospital if they don't need to so and then the the biggest drawback is that you're not going to get paid through the government. So I think that maybe this is something I don't know how many practitioners are out there like yourself. Is it practitioner? Can I call you that? Or nurse no? nurse practitioner. So I have to call you NP. NP. Okay. NP. So, yeah, that's so right. So NPs, I think that they should open up the floodgates and say, hey, we're going to be funding NPs because how many consults can somebody do? Like how many consults can, right, especially right now, right? How many consults can can a GP take? on right now much less how many gps are actually able to figure out how to do it virtually right a lot lot of them are just probably like i'm just going to take the next three to four weeks off and so now nobody has a gp and and so i think your service is an amazing offering and i think that this is going to be something that a lot of people are going to move moving forward right like i don't want to go to emerge the other day jet had some type of allergy reaction right and you can do you can do kids as well like yeah absolutely and you know things like rash yeah it's probably just it's gold right uh, allergic to me, right? So it's definitely his internet because yesterday Mark was fine. Yeah. It's mine. It's got to be. I'm uh, I'm on a direct connection here. Maybe um, it's not as direct as you think it is. Oh, maybe maybe not. <laughs> eh? But yeah, like you know, if we can avoid sitting, Nary's at the emerge for six hours. Nobody wants to yeah. sit in that environment regardless. No. Uh, who, it doesn't even matter what it costs to have you come to the house. That's yeah. great. Mm. That's great. And for yeah, 30 absolutely. bucks, I mean, it costed us for Neri to park down there. Yeah. It costed us almost $12 for the time it took her, six hours. Like, if you're working, you got to take six hours off work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you just know? to confirm, yeah. so somebody's, the next question is how much? What are you telling them? You have a price structure? Well, uh, to do a virtual purchase? consult normally takes about 15, 20 minutes. Uh, to see me for that, it's $35 right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which I is... mean, it, 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 time is your, you know, for busy professionals like you, your, your time is your money, right? Mm-hmm. So $35 is probably nothing. But, you know, uh, you made a good point about this being publicly funded because I don't like charging people, but I have to yeah. in order to, uh, to run this business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, if it's publicly funded, mm then I wouldn't have to charge anyone. Yeah, yeah. You, sure, you certainly shouldn't feel bad about uh, charging people for this service. Yeah. This is a great service. No great, wait, great no wait value. times. Absolutely. It's the, same, it's the same. Like, you've given me my prescription. You're just like, hey, RJ, your prescription's uh, sent over to that. And within a day, they called me. We have your prescription ready for pickup. It would have been nice if they would have just delivered. But obviously, they can do that. So I just haven't gotten. That's your pharmacy's issue, not his. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. so <laughs> you never really, like, that's the whole thing is this is the way of the future is you don't really have to leave your home mm-hmm. right and so if they can just see you you call in the prescription the prescription's ready they deliver it to you you know and if you're sick like i don't want to get up and go to you know shoppers drug mart if i don't have to right sure. like i have a wife and so she'll go pick it up or somebody will pick it up for me but if you don't have anybody yeah 
and you got to go to your GP or go to the eMERGE. Like you said, they, they've got to drive themselves. They're sick, which is already, painful. which is already like, that's a, that's a problem because mm-hmm. if you're sick and you're elderly, mm-hmm. you're on the, f- you're on the road and you've mm-hmm. got, you know, you're potentially going to cause an accident or mm-hmm. something, right? Well, possibly. Yeah. But I mean, it's all about the time, right? You know, the parking, that's, that's right. A, that's a pain. Nobody wants to be walking from, you know, you're not getting parking close. And so in you the know winter. In the winter, you know, you're yeah. walking a far distance with mm-hmm. 40 below blown in your face. And it's not cheap to yeah. park downtown. Parking isn't free <laughs> at all. 12 to $15 yeah. Yeah. per yeah. day. Yeah. Awesome. You know, even just uh, yesterday, I had, um, you know, a worried, uh, a worried mom. You know, she had uh, a rash that she wanted to get take a look at. Uh, sent me a picture, mm-hmm. you know, I was able to diagnose it and send a treatment over to the pharmacy. The pharmacy delivered it. And this was all done within half an hour. Mm-hmm. And they didn't have to go anywhere. Yeah. And they had maybe three kids that they would have to pack up and then yes. go to a walk-in clinic. Oh. Like, it, imagine sitting in a walk-in parking, clinic and everyone's coughing. you got to take yeah. all your kids over with, it's, it's, it's inconvenience, <laughs> man. Trust Absolutely. me, I have two. And it's uh, a major inconvenience to go downtown to mm. see the GP or whatever it is. Yeah. Absolutely. So can we get into it? Can we talk about the corona? Yeah. Can we start putting some Just people in? First, Umish says thank you for taking the time to to meet with him last week. Oh, Umish, yes, absolutely. I'm not sure and you know what? I... breaks any FIA rules or... <laughs> <laughs> well, no, if, if he uh, initiated exactly. the conversation. Yeah. yeah, he actually mentioned that he, he was really happy with the service. Yeah. I talked to him. Absolutely. Just give him brief advice and yeah. uh, just do follow-ups, yeah. Marvin, somebody's asking for your, your contact deets. What's the best way to get a hold of him right away? Uh, just go to my website, homehealthnp.com. Home health. You can call me. Uh, all my contact info is on there. Okay. Home dot com. Health NP dot com. That's right. Awesome. He's also on Instagram. You get a yeah. lot of good information on uh, on his Instagram mm-hmm. posts. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. Give us a prediction. What are you seeing on the front lines? <clears throat> how do you? How so. My assessment right now of how uh, Manitoba is doing is actually quite positive. I don't know if they're talking about this enough. You guys know about the flattening of the curve, right? Yes. Um, if you go on the government website, it shows you a chart of like where, you know, where everyone's trending. Mm-hmm. The rest of the, the provinces are doing this, right? And they're flattening out, starting to flatter a little bit. But Manitoba has actually been one of the only provinces that has already kind of a flat curve. We've had uh, a few days where we've had like, you know, there was that one day where we had like 10 or 14 new cases, but given the size of our population, it's still fairly low. So I think Manitobans were doing a great job of uh, kind of curbing, um, you know, the disease transmission. Mm -hmm. Uh, In terms of timeline, I think, you know, a conservative estimate, I think, is three to six months. You know, by the summer, maybe they're going to start easing up on uh, on social distancing and opening up more services to the community. But yeah. I think that's just conservative. You know, if, if you ease up too early, uh, you could get maybe a secondary resurgence like they were seeing in, in China at one point. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, there's some positive news. You know, in, in China, they're saying that they're opening, starting to open up services again. So... Wow. Uh, I think we're not in the clear yet, but yeah. it might be the calm before the storm. It's hard to say. I feel like there's a lot of positive information that we're just not hearing, right? We're hearing a lot of the negative. I think we're doing very well here in Manitoba. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I'm happy with it. I'm glad you said that. That's good. Have you? Do you know anybody? Have you Have you treated anybody? Do you know anybody with the coronavirus? Uh, you know, I've had um, I've had calls and inquiries about um, screening and get it tested. Mm-hmm. I haven't. Uh, I don't know anyone in particular uh, that has um, COVID nineteen, but mm-hmm. you know, a lot of my colleagues that I used to work with in emergency and access centers, um, you know, they're in the front line, so um, mm-hmm. you know, they're getting exposed to to all all that kind of stuff. And how are they doing? it's tough you know people are just they're worried uh, they're not having the proper uh, equipment you know there's equipment issues in terms of like protective equipment um, and you know daily exposure to that kind of uh, that kind of transmission is um, really kind of worrying a lot of providers mm-hmm. do they do you have to walk into a hospital as a as a nurse or a doctor wearing full gear now or are you still allowed to walk in there 
without having your face covered or even your body covered. What's it like in there? I haven't been into a hospital lately. You know what? I've been on parental leave right before uh, the shutting down of uh, all these uh, services. But um, from what I understand, uh, it, when you're dealing with someone who has COVID-19, you're in full protective gear. And uh, so they use something called droplet precautions. And so they have to glove, gown, mask, and uh, they also have a face shield. Okay. Right. And so that's one time use only. So that they, after their encounter, they throw all that stuff away and they have to wash your hands and everything after that. So okay. um, you're not walking in with all that equipment because you have to change it constantly. Right. Because if you get the virus on your clothes, it's the same thing, right? Okay. You- so Marvin, let me ask you this. What? This is going to stick around for a little while, right? Like this, once ev- once they get everything all said and done, you can still catch it even after we've all been kind of out in the clear, right? Like if one person has it, it's going to cont- continue on for the next little while, right? Like this is how do, how does it work? Like I'm a little bit confused as as to what it, what it really is, right? It's a it's a it's a cold basically, right? It's a flu. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, this virus causes um, almost like a cold or flu-like symptoms. Okay. Uh, and the worry is in uh, people who aren't, uh, you know, immune strong. Yeah. Um, it really attacks their lungs and it causes um, really complicated uh, pneumonia and people will have to get uh, intubated and uh, ventilated. Uh, but for most most people who get uh, coronavirus, they're going to experience mild runny nose, cough, um, they might have a fever, they might feel short of breath. Um, and then most, in most cases, if you're, if you've got a good uh, immune system, it's going to clear. Uh, so that's, that's kind of the good news. But in terms of the transmission, you know, some people are passing it from what I understand all asymptomatically, and we're not testing uh, those populations. Mm-hmm. We're testing the people who have symptoms, mm-hmm. but the people who have symptoms are more likely to transmit it mm-hmm. uh, via what we call droplet. So if you cough, you're, you know, you, you spit and then the droplets contaminate whatever is in front of you. So if it gets on your skin and then you touch your face, then you have the virus, mm-hmm. right? And so that's how it's transmitted uh, person to person. And if you touch a contaminated surface and then you touch your face, mm. then you're 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 getting it um, uh, the virus as well like that. When, once you have it and get through it, are you immune to it? That's a good question. Uh, we don't know yet because there are some viruses where, like chickenpox, right? You get it once mm-hmm. and then you develop the antibodies and then you just never get it again. Yeah. Uh, we don't know. Uh, we don't know with coronavirus. Uh, time will tell. Okay. Um, so are people yeah. going to need a shot? Like, does everybody need a shot in, you know, once there's a, a fix for this? Is it going to be like a flu shot that you get once and, you know what I mean? And then oh. you're immune to it or like, what's the end game here? We hope there's going to be a vaccine. Mm-hmm. And if there's a vaccine, then everyone's going to need that shot or at least, you know, the ones who are most at risk. Mm-hmm uh will need it yeah so if they develop one people will will be certainly getting that uh, vaccine i feel uh, there was a one of the girls on my facebook she posted about how she was and i remember she was extremely sick with a flu back in i don't know january possibly december and uh, kept commenting about how this seems so much worse than uh, any other flu she's ever gotten before and i remember that because she was she announced it quite a bit and then moving forward just the other day she posted and said she asked a question that i just asked you and thinking back, I almost feel like I got the flu. My mother got the flu. Jen got the oh, yeah. flu. You guys had it bad. Yeah, and really bad. Yeah. You know, it wasn't just a cold. Like, it really knocked us down for a long time and, yeah. for, a, and for, like, quite a few days yeah. as well as hitting us very hard. I'm Jerome almost, had it. Jerome had it, yeah. I'm yeah. almost wondering if we have had it, yeah. didn't know it, yeah. and got through it. That's, I, I feel like that's... I we, think we Jerome's had more carrier. of a common cold. <laughs> <laughs> it all stems we, from Jerome. We almost lost Jerome. Never yeah, mind. Yeah. That was a bit of a scare. I keep telling him, stop eating raw bats. <laughs> yeah. He just keeps doing it. <laughs> At least cook them first. <laughs> Do you, think- you know, it's all, it's all about risk. I, it, it's hard. The, the chances of you having the COVID-19 back in January are probably extremely low because we didn't have... Uh, we didn't have the cases uh, 
uh, start yet. But okay. who knows? Maybe it was it's been circulating for a while, mm -hmm. and people were passing it uh, be, because, and we weren't testing for it, right? Because yeah. the more we test for it, like the more we're identifying cases. So, right. um, you know, if you got through it, then great. Maybe you have the antibodies, and you won't get it again. Like um, I but I almost wonder if they would come up with a volunteer program where if you feel like maybe you had it, you had a really strong cold. Like, could they, how, how would they figure that out? They just take some blood from you and figure out what you're no longer, uh, what you can no longer succumb to, or how would that work? How can they take uh, my bat blood and uh, solve like my Batman blood and solve everybody else's problem? Uh, are you asking like how they test for it? Yeah, like uh, could they could they test and see if I had it, and they would know that I had it. Or is that uh, yeah that's a good question yeah. um, they don't know yet they don't know yet the, oh, okay. the, so the testing that they do right now um, they look at certain um, uh, they, they look at certain indicators but they do like the nasal pharyngeal swab mm. and they see if it's positive but uh, in some cases even when the uh, symptoms have resolved you're still seeing that it's positive mm -hmm. uh, so we don't know you know there's some there's some things where if you test it too early, it's going to be positive still. And so we don't know what the turnaround time with clearing it and having uh, you cleared, you know, all the all the testing is. So, uh, again, th those are things that, um, you know, health agencies are looking at. Right. And really, once more research is done, that's when they're going to figure out all the answers. Okay. We don't have all the answers, unfortunately. So yeah. is there some type of self test like I read somewhere if you can hold your breath for 10 seconds without coughing or like, is there any kind of like, you know what I mean? Mama Juju's home remedy that I could figure out how, if I got it or not. Like, yeah, you know, uh, there's, there's nothing that I could recommend in terms of a home test. Um, you know, the, uh, the, the government has the, uh, the screening tool online. Mm. I, you know, uh, so we ask anyone who's worried that they have COVID to do the online screening tool okay. and then to call health links, right? What's, what's, uh, that? what's no, that website or you know what it is? Uh, it's on, uh, it's on the, uh, Manitoba website. If you just look up shared health COVID-19 screening tool, you'll find it. It's also on my uh, on my web page. Okay, on I your don't website? know the exact uh, address. Yeah, shared health MB COVID nineteen resources. Would it be fair screening to say that? tool? Screening Look tool. For screening tool. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, that's a good resource because if you can't get through the health links uh, and you can't talk to a, a healthcare provider, then you can use that uh, to determine what action you need to do yet uh, next. Okay. But yeah, you know, it's a good point you brought up about. Um, uh, kind of that information where you're getting, uh, it's important that you get reliable information. And so yeah. um, I would reference the uh, uh, Manitoba website. So that's the gov.mb.ca slash COVID-19. Yeah. So that's a good local resource. Uh, and then the uh, Canada.ca, the Public Health Agency of Canada, they, um, they post reliable information and everything's up to date right now, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, a lot of the stuff people are getting off the internet about quick uh, or prevention of COVID, things like that. Uh, there's just no evidence to support it. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that maybe it doesn't work, but, you know, just be very careful with uh, with that type of information. Right. So what? Oh, OK, just I hate getting sent to a website and stuff like that. Just tell me what it is. Right. So if I'm sick. Right. Like people are going to get sick right now. I see people out there. I saw, the other day I saw a guy. Walking around, he had a mask on, right? He had a mask on. It was it was probably minus 20 out with the windshield. Pretty cold. He had a mask on so he doesn't get this COVID. He's in shorts and a T-shirt, right? So that guy's going to get sick, right? And he's going to, oh, I have COVID, right? So, like, I think everybody wants to get a little scratch in the throat. You know, if I throw out a little cough because I got a little phlegm in my throat, these, mm -hmm. you know, even these guys are looking at me like I got, you know, the herp or something, right? And so, <laughs> so, okay, I'm at home. I've got a cold. When do I go and see a doc or when do I call you or, you know what I mean? Because there's that line, right? Like everybody's going to get sick. It's just, this is, you, this is the sick season. Yeah. Where do they draw that line and say, okay, I need to find out if I have COVID? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, essentially what these screening tools or if you call health links, mm. Uh, it's about risk. What's your uh, risk of having COVID? Yeah. If you just have a cold, so yeah. like runny nose, cough, sore throat, yeah. uh, but you haven't been exposed to anyone who has traveled outside of Manitoba, okay. right? 
So interprovincially or internationally, yeah. or someone who has tested positive for COVID-19, mm -hmm. uh, then they're saying to self-monitor your symptoms, right? And not to go out in public uh, until you're, you're better. These, these populations we're not testing for. Uh, but as the days go by, they're expanding. So maybe one day, if we have the capacity, they're going to test people with just a common cold, but no risk uh, of exposure uh, like yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to ask yourself, have you had any risk of contact to someone with exposures? And if, there, if it's a yes and you have the symptoms, yeah. then probably you should get uh, screened yeah. and tested. I, I find, so I've seen people that I know they've traveled and they self-quarantined. So when they came back from their trip, they self-quarantined themselves, <clears throat> and but they didn't have any symptoms when they came back. And then now they're kind of out and about and they feel like <clears throat> they just got out of jail, right? And so... Yeah. Like those people, we just like we need to tell them just keep their distance or you know what I mean? Because I find that those are the people that are trying to come closest to me at this point. Right. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah. you know what? I love you and I'm not afraid you of it. Be. Just but just, yeah, just like eh, distance yourself a little bit. Right. Like, again, yeah, you you're should be. Yeah. So, yeah, Absolutely. like they traveled somewhere. They don't have any symptoms, but still they should still be a little bit. You know what I mean? Like give it give, give everybody a little yeah. bit of distance and try not to touch anything. Hey, look. <laughs> and, you know, to follow up with your concern, if you've had close contact with them yeah. and you're having the cold, yeah. then you would qualify as someone who would probably need screening, Ugh, right? Because yeah. you've, had, you've had positive contact. So yeah. what's close contact though, right? Like yeah. you and Rick right now, that's close contact, right? We you're measure this is four, talking to each other. four feet. No, that's good. You guys are okay. taking proper social yeah. distancing precaution. Yeah. But if you just walk by them or you're seeing them through a window, okay. that's not close contact. Okay. If you've been in the same room as someone for a couple hours but yeah. haven't talked to them, that's yeah. actually still considered uh, close contact. Can I ask you a question? Right. Yeah. Did you have any more about that point? I do. Okay. Let's just stay on this. Let's yep. not do the other stuff. Um, okay, I'm at a grocery store. Everybody's going to the grocery store, right? Everybody needs to hit up the grocery store. Somebody with this COVID is at the grocery store. They don't know about it. And everybody's touching the fruit and the watermelon and seeing, you know, what's, you know, <clears throat> listening to it, kissing it, right? Like, can't, that, can't they get it transmitted by going to the grocery stores and touching the same things that they're touching? Uh, that's another good question. So, you know, in terms of food transmission, um, there's not any evidence and i always say evidence because you know that's that's what science is based on mm -hmm. um there's no evidence to support that um you can get the covid virus uh through food transmission mm -hmm. so that's a good thing right mm -hmm. um but with that being said you know it can still be on the surfaces Surface. of things that you buy okay. right so if you're buying um like a so, something so say say someone had covid and they touched like a like a water bottle and then you grab that, you know, and then you touch your face, then oh, yeah. you can get that at the grocery store, right? Mm -hmm. So you wanna try <laughs> you wanna try your best not to touch your face and wash your hands constantly. Yeah. Because really that's the best way to prevent it. Because viruses can stay on surfaces. Yeah. Okay. They've they've done some research about um, you know, it's staying on certain surfaces for anywhere from a few hours to like a few days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so just think about how viruses are transmitted. Yeah. And if you can picture a virus being there for a while, yeah. then know that that's a time for you to wash your hands. Doesn't the average touch person touch their face like 13 times an hour or something like that? I just yeah, touched my used... face at like 50 <laughs> times in the last like <laughs> yeah. 15 minutes. So, yeah. um, but you I'm don't know you're doing here. it. Yeah. So a good thing to do no, would be to wear, just a, a natural. wear a mask. That I, I think there, to recap this particular comment yeah. would be wear a mask while you're shopping just to avoid touching your face because you're going to touch stuff that other yeah. people touch. And you you're going to touch your face. Yeah. Like I'm itchy mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. <laughs> just thinking about it. Right. <laughs> so, Marvin, let me ask you this then. That's, and this is a good, good, good thing to know is our food. Right. So let's say our our food comes from you know Italy or wherever. Right. Like the food that's coming. Let's say it's a chicken. Right. Obviously, our chicken's not coming from China. But if it mm -hmm. were if we're cooking the food, we're not like, it doesn't get transmitted. Like if you're eating chicken from China, it's not getting transmitted. Correct? No. Uh, and you, you should buy your chicken here locally just to yeah. support the local business. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. I've, I've been <laughs> to those third world countries though. Their, their chicken's probably healthier for you than the chicken here. I mean, there's no, yeah. there's no injections. There's no, um, there's no nothing. So, uh, yeah, uh, there's no evidence to support, uh, transmission through food just yet yeah but we don't know yeah 
I would say wash your hands and just take the proper precautions. Yeah. All right. And, and you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, add, Rick, I'm gonna add uh, to the mask thing. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, the mask is almost like a false sense of security. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and you kind of put a target on yourself if you're walking around with a mask. Oh, yeah. The only people in public who should be wearing a mask are people who are sick. That's how I. And look those at people them. actually should be at home. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so if you look at someone with a mask. Um, you might stay further away from them, which yeah. which is probably a good idea. But mm-hmm. for people regularly, when they touch your face and they don't put it on properly, and some people scratch under yeah. because it's annoying. And so people will break barriers more often if they have that mask, mm-hmm. and then they're less likely to do things like wash your hands. You're better off just doing the social distancing and the proper like hand hygiene uh, ha- rather than wearing a mask. Is hand sanitizer just as effective as hand washing? Uh yeah, absolutely. It is. Eh? Um, I would say they're recommending right now to do soap because uh, you know just just normal hand washing. Yeah. Uh, and with hand washing, like people, most people probably think they know how to wash your hands properly, but most people probably don't do it properly. Show us. You know, you gotta do. You gotta. You gotta start. Is there a song? Start somewhere, <laughs> right? Start with, with the rest. Know. Get the pot. No, I got, I got no song. But <laughs> okay. You got to get everything. Like crevices in between the fingers, okay. right? The back of the hands yeah. and, the, and the nails. You know, you got to scratch oh, yeah. the nails on the palm, yeah. right? 20 seconds. 20 seconds. So 20 seconds, yeah. I, like, I know I have these soaps. Yesterday, Neri gave me the soap. And I say, you know, these little things that smell like vanilla. I said, I don't want those. I never wanted those. I said, I want something that's actually got some type of antibacterial in it, right? Mm-hmm. If I'm washing my hands, I don't want to just rub you know, perfume on my hands. I want something that's actually cleaning it, right? Yeah. So what do you recommend for people to have as, let's say that everything was available. What kind of like hand soap would you recommend people to use? There's nothing in particular, but you know, I like, I like soaps that are foamy Oh yeah. or, or sanitizer that's foamy because yeah. the surface area covers more mm. of the hand. And so you're more likely to, get into the tough crevices right uh that way but you know all the soap any soap is really sufficient. not the perfume ones right or... yeah like dove that 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 kills bacteria like you want to use those not like the bed bath and beyond ones right they're probably all equally effective but really? you get the added bonus of some you know fancy smell so right? you're just basically washing off germs you're not killing it that's bas- that's what you're saying you're killing do. germs with with uh with soap actually it it breaks down the the virus and the bacteria, not, and not, you're washing it away ones? mechanically. What about the perfume ones that don't have any of that it's stuff? It's just an it? added bonus. It's still cleaning. It's a yeah, you know, the, it's a soap. The soaping action, the yeah. foamy action, okay. that that actually kills. So oh, whether okay. or not you have perfume, oh, okay, uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and it, it's not an anti. It's not actually an antibacterial, like an antibiotic in it yeah. or anything. Okay. It's just like the action of the soap will actually physically destroy oh, okay. viruses and bacteria yeah i didn't know that i wonder how many people knew that because i thought that you had to have these crazy ones these specialized covid19 hand washes in hydrogen peroxide <laughs> and rubbing alcohol like you don't need to go that extreme i think like most no, things are just over not. we're over complicating everything i feel yeah you know what i mean stick to good old-fashioned but hand but washing is, and we we'll probably solve to know absolutely like, when you, you go bet. to the stores what's the number one thing sold out is yeah. Pr- hydro- you can't even get hydrogen peroxide. You can't get rubbing alcohol. It's, it, it, I was going to make a bad joke. Anyways, <laughs> uh, so, so you can't get these, but people thinking that's the only way that they're going to stay safe. Stay safe. Yeah. Please don't ever say that to me, guys. Stay safe. Me neither. <laughs> yeah. Or travel safe. <laughs> yeah. Don't say that. Yeah, don't say it to <laughs> no. me. <laughs> so you're, what you're saying is that they don't need to go and dip their hands in rubbing alcohol. Like, You know what I mean? Like, it's no. they, Any soap, as long as they're getting the foamy action... As long as they're doing the wrist and fingertips and and uh, yeah. all that, then Crevices, they're, they're anything, golden. Yeah. They, so let me ask Absolutely. you this. And sorry, because um, I'm really interested in this. That we have those hand sanitizer, right? And then you rub it on. Like, can you do that instead of washing your hands? Yep. Okay. You know, it's uh, right now the uh, the health authorities are recommending hand washing first. Yeah. And if you don't have the proper hand washing like materials there, like soap and water then uh, a sanitizer is just as good uh, as a, a way to clean your hands. Absolutely. So people can just use hand sanitizer, like they don't have to be washing their hands. And like, let's say they're, they're working, right? And they're a delivery guy. Like he's not going to stop off after every place to go and wash his hands. And so he can just have a, some hand sanitizer, 
put it on their hands. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. It's the high concentration of alcohol in the sanitizer that kills the bacteria and viruses. Okay. UPS guys, they're not even uh, making you sign for it now. Yeah. They're just dropping stuff off. Which is good. I like that. Perfect. Yeah, so I walked be. out my door yeah. yesterday. I said, oh, yeah, I forgot I ordered that. Be guaranteed. They love it. <laughs> yeah. It makes their life a lot easier. Oh, yeah. they just Less time and whatever. Right? For sure. So I think next week we're going to have some hand sanitizer available here at the club. I ordered a box from a friend of ours that does. He's, he's getting that. So we'll make that available to everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Oh, we were we were kind of the first ones to do all the precautionary stuff before everybody told oh, us to. We were doing crazy. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, you guys have been doing a great job with that. Hey, can I ask you? Can we change the uh, the uh, narrative of this conversation real yeah, quick? Four minutes. Sure. I'm actually just interested in the history of uh, you know. I, I did the intro here. 2011. You were a nurse. You were doing some ICU stuff in Selkirk, Winnipeg, and then you yeah. transition over into a nurse practitioner. So can you? So you start off as a nurse. You end up as a nurse practitioner. So what what is next? <laughs> What's the uh, and does it does it take seven years of, of study and education and hands on to go from one to the other? You know, this is the end for me. You know, I I can basically practice to the top of my scope, right? To be able to see patients uh, in a clinical setting and to see and manage your health. Um, that's really all I want. And there's not really much more I can do other than maybe if I wanted to get into research or, or, or do a, a doctorate. Um, but this is for me, this is the end of the line, but that's why I'm, I'm running home health NP because mm -hmm. I want to kind of change the healthcare system um, by offering these types of services, right? Mm -hmm. Because people are seeing value in it. And that's why I have, that's why I have to keep going. Mm -hmm. When I see someone virtually or see someone in their home and they're like, oh man, I didn't know this was available. Uh, you know, how valuable service, like I keep going because, you know, these services, they're out there. Uh, but there's not a lot of us that, that are offering it. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but imagine how better the healthcare system would be if, if you could have these services readily available to you, right? Absolutely. And here's a nice thing about Marvin is he's a partner with Fit Club. So he actually goes to, he spent four hours or three hours over at Fit Club West. He saw five different patients. And he's also going to be setting, once we get up and running, he's going to be setting up here at North. So we want to make this service you know that's what we are we're a lifestyle service right mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we're not just a gym right like i don't you don't ever call me a gym <clears throat> right like we're we're a lifestyle service and so having something like this having a professional here so that we keep it within these four walls you need embroidery guy we got rick he'll take care of everything you need for promotional items if we need a uh, prac uh, nurse nurse practitioner did i get that right nurse practitioner then yeah, that's it. available service to you we have a massage therapist we have a videographer who's done photos and videos like we we have a one-stop shop here not just for your health and fitness like like we said yesterday we want this to stem out in all different directions so as you get better with your health and fitness through working out with us guess what we have people that we work in conjunction with we had, yesterday we had our uh, accountant on so i don't know if you've watched that but uh yeah, I, I highly recommend to watch that one because you're going to learn so much about mm -hmm. what's current. Absolutely. I mean, even what we talked about yesterday, there's been a big update. You, you know what I mean? And so like he provides us with that information ongoing. Yeah. And so these are the partnerships that we're looking to make, because if we can do that in times like this, you know, I, if I need a call, like I'm like, I got Marvin. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Nary, you don't need to leave the house and potentially get our kids infected be just yeah not even call we're just gonna zoom it right mm -hmm. like take a look yeah, at this little rash right. marvin what is it mm -hmm. oh let me prescribe you a, a, a cream for that oh, okay mm -hmm. thanks that was 10 minutes you know what i mean yeah that's exactly it so we're just trying to create a business network of people who have yeah. businesses and you know our common denominator is health and fitness yep. specifically to fit club yep. so that's what we're trying to do so anybody who's watching before you start googling stuff just let <laughs> us know because we probably got the yeah. guy or gal yeah. who can help you out yeah. with it right yeah. so it's homehealthnp.com that's Home right. Health yeah. and and com. And I'll just add to that, you know, you guys are doing such a great job uh, for your community and your members like uh, to, to reach out and do this podcast and offer your um, workouts online and, and to the public. Like that's an amazing service. And, you know, people need that. People are forgetting about their own health, but you haven't given up on your community just nope. because we have all these restrictions. So kudos to you guys. I think I just got a little teary eyed right there. No, that was my, a very nice thing. My to heart say. just fluttered. <laughs> <laughs> What's that called, Marvin? That's called love. <laughs> hey, Marvin, we want to thank you for joining us yes. today. 
Absolutely. Thanks for having me on, guys. No problem. A little dance on the way out, Marvin. Hey, hey, hey. Podcast number eight. Yeah. Is done.